I'm Bracken Crocker, on site here in Navy Pier, joining me live from somewhere in California, the fourth place finisher at the 2021 High Rocks World Championships, Hunter McIntyre. Thanks for that extremely valuable data point. I can't remember the last time you raised a High Rocks because the data is not worth studying. But uh, it's good also to catch up with you too, current world Bracken. record holder, current world record holder, multi-time world champion. The best male in the sport right now, not competing, so he's gracing us with his appearance today on the live stream. I'm on vacation. Uh, yeah, I'm really about this, dude. Um, I've done a lot of studying. I spent the last, shoot, 48 hours watching as much film as I possibly could from 2020 up until now. So I've got some good data points, some really exciting notables. Um, but let's get some predictions out of the way. Uh, let's start with the guys. What are your predictions? Top three. My, my predictions are chaos, Hunter. Without you here to set the tone, there are two people that are probably going to get out pretty hot. We're talking Ryan Kent, and I'm thinking Alexander Aronkovic. I think they're going to set the tone, and anyone who goes with them has a real good chance of crumbling and leaving the door open for the Dylan Scotts of the world to charge right up through the ranks and finish on that podium. Just so I'm clear about this, who are some of the most notable people that are not in the top 15 that may have been a threat? Nah, I mean, Rich, Rich Ryan was probably the most notable. He was third here last year, seventh at Worlds. He won't be there. You're obviously not there as the reigning world champ and world record holder. On the men's side, I'd say those are the two biggest, unless we've had some people who no-showed uh, due to COVID or flight problems that we're unaware of. Okay. All right, here's my predictions. It's going to go uh, Kent, Ronkovic, Sandy, and uh, Sandy and Winish coming too. Yeah, they're both here. I think it's literally going to be the same exact number of the podiums two, three, four, Kent's in first, but only by the hair of his chin. I think this is going to actually be a pretty tight race. But also Kent is one yep. of these kind of people that rides off of confidence. So if he starts out strong and Ronkovic can't hold on, it will be a 90-second lead by the end of the race. But it all depends, I think, on the first, like, five minutes of this race, maybe even seven. Yeah, I um, think whoever gets into or out of burpee broad jumps first is probably your winner. But all three of those guys up at the top need some good momentum in order to pull this thing off. Now, I brought a stack of cash with me today. I'm willing to do some betting. Um, let's get this done. So we already have the podium all stacked up here. Do we agree entirely? Uh, I'm going to say third, fourth. I'm going to say Dylan Scott takes third. I do believe Alexander Ronkovic takes second. And I, uh, Sanbach is right there as is Venish, but I think Dylan's going to run the the cleanest race. And I think on the last two stations, we'll pull into that third spot. All right, $20 bet on third place. Oh, let's make it 15. Money's no concern. All right. That's okay. I like that. I like that. You said 15? That's a cut. Yeah. That's a cut down. I said 20. I'm not here to do math. Uh, I'm here to talk about predictions. Now, is this the same venue that we've always been racing in? Is this Navy Pier? Same venue, same basic layout. Uh, they swapped a couple locations here. Uh, but the big difference is that they set up the arena in the middle for this championship race, just like they did at World Championships. So even though the uh, doubles and open waves this morning ran almost the identical course to last year, this will be a totally different rock zone. It's a long rock zone. And then uh, the, the last run, the eighth run, is probably only going to be about six or seven, uh, eight or 900 meters because of how big the rock zone is. And just so that I'm clear, none of these times will qualify for the Elite 15, only the top three placements? That is the rumor I've heard. I don't have confirmation on that. But yeah, I think they will keep this as a standalone because it's the arena style rather than the typical course setup. Interesting. What yeah, about I the women? It's really challenging. Well, I don't really know who's coming over on the women's side, but I can never argue against Lauren Weeks. If that Swedish girl comes over, here's one thing that I just want to like make abundantly clear. I, I think it's going to sting for for the Europeans to come and test the sleds. So I bet you Dylan Scott actually has a chance of beating out 
these guys because he's been used to pushing these sleds. The women are going to be shocked by it. The men are going to be shocked by it. It's just something that's like never spoken about, but is also one of the kind of like the big dark uh, beasts under the surface of the water, which is just the presence of the sleds in America. Something that had to be done last year during world championships is they took a plate off of the sled. So I don't know if they did that again this time, but I would bet that the women even, even though there's a lot of really, really strong girls from Europe, you're going to watch this shakeup. Um, and I would make a strong prediction that Weeks is going to have a dominant finish here. I would also have a prediction that Megan is going to do extremely well. And then my third prediction would probably be somebody like that Swedish girl. Is that Linda? Yeah, look, you, you want me to read off the lineups here so that we get everyone on home, at home and us on the same page here? Yeah. All right, so on the women's side, we have, and this is the order they're ranked coming in, which is based off of the times that they've run this year. We yep. have Michaela Norman, Meg Jacoby, Linda Meyer, Tara Jackson, Viola Oberlander, Lauren Weeks, Alondra Greenlee, Jacqueline Lippenmeyer, Camilla Massa, Vivian Tafudo, Bridget Brown, Chris Roglowski, and Eva Janssen. So our reigning world champ comes in as the second last seed on the women's side. And then over on the men's side, we have Dylan Scott, Florian Gast, Jonathan Wynn, Alexander Ronkovich, Michael Sandbach, Tim Venish, Jeff Watson. Oh, there's a board, Jordan. Uh, uh, David Magida, Jose Salama, Patrick Grew, Ryan Kent, Stefan Blecken. I'm, I'm rooting for Blecken because it's real close to Brecken. Jordan Bryant, Colin Stiefert, and Alphonse De Ruiz. Oh my God, look how tiny Kent looks next to all these guys. Holy crap. Either it's a really, it's like a fisheye lens or he, these guys are big. I walked through the warm up area a few minutes ago. These Europeans are all tall. They're long. They're, they're built a little bit differently than the U.S. men. It's interesting to see. Yeah, you can see the size on, on David Magida. Like he's always been a bigger high rocks guy. Michael Sandback, you can see how skinny and lean he is. And then Dylan behind him looks like Gumby, but he's a Terminator, absolute Terminator. Expecting big yeah, things Sandbach, out of my boy Dylan. Sandbatch is an interesting one because in the past he's been boom or bust. He's walked off course. He's not finished some things. He's, he's blown up on some stations. But we saw at Euros, he came into the wall ball second and took third. And I think that was very, very big for him. That was a championship event, and he showed up and did pretty well. And I think he's able to, off of that, swing a little bit harder this week. But you're right about these sleds. The European sleds blow you up because they're lighter. And so you work the whole time and don't take breaks. And then at the end, you think, oh, shoot, I went a little bit too hard. But the U.S. sleds force you to break, and they just wear you down. And so they hit very differently. And I don't think that they've taken the plate off unless they've done it last minute, and that's going to hit these gentlemen differently who like to get out fast, like Sanbaj, like uh, uh, Ronkovich. These guys like to be aggressive. You know, I've never seen this guy before. That's uh, yeah, Patrick Kent Grew looks there. Tiny. Kent looks so tiny right now. This, this is interesting to me because so many of these guys have very similar skill sets. There's four or five guys who are pretty strong skiers and like to get to the front of the race and go, and then don't have specifically spectacular stations after that, but they're steady the whole way through. And you know how it is. When you get multiple people at the same skill level with the same strategy, it just doesn't go well for everyone. Yeah, and especially it's really tough in the grid, like once you're right next to each other and you're just seeing that person turn the corner just in front of you, only like five meters ahead of you, and then they just turn the corner again, it chips away at you mentally. It really just does. And it's super hard to, like, you know, you were talking about this in the last race. Sometimes when you get out and you get around a corner on somebody, you can kind of trick how big your lead is. And when it's just people kind of moving like ants and lines back and forth, it's just, it's a really tough thing to manage. That's why, um, you know, honestly, it's, it's, I think it's best to either be in the very front of the pack or be from very far behind chasing. Yeah. So you've done this. 
you've won multiple world championships and set world titles, which in this sport so far, we've seen people who are really good at running championship style ta tactical races and closing and executing well, or people who are good at running very fast times, but can't really execute when you've got a whole herd of horses around you trying to do it all at the same time. So having done it yourself with this arena style setup, who do you think has a good chance of kind of handling this championship moment, men's and women? I don't know. Like, so like, let's just say somebody like Megan, who's never raced on the grid, or did Megan race over in European championships? She did. She did she European did championships, yeah. Okay. So some of these people that haven't been on the grid before, I think really hard time. What people don't know about is there's those little turnarounds. And when you turn around that many times, not only is it disorienting, but it just adds time. It adds volume. So anybody who's not been on the grid before is going to have a really hard time. Um, I think people that are experienced, obviously, as I said, that's always a better factor. Um, people like Kent, who are a confidence-based person, are not going to be able to gain as much confidence um, on the grid because it's it, you don't really understand where you're associated with everybody because there's so many people moving in close proximity. Uh, that's a big factor. Um, as far as weeks, the women's side, like, you know, weeks, as I said, she's just the Terminator. Uh, I think somebody like Chris Groglowski could also do really well because Chris came from behind and nobody noticed her so i don't think people were trying to push really hard away from her and then she just mm -hmm. snuck right by linda so that might be another opportunity for her um you'll just never know where she's at until all of a sudden she's right next to you or just past you i think that's a, another really big factor um so i i know we have talked about Megita at all but you know i I think he keeps on trying to say that, you know, something didn't work out for him in the last race. Like, supposedly if he's got all this stuff in the tank, this may be the place that he executes it. He's on home soil. He's strong. Heads are playing to his advantage. He might be one of these dark horses that come up onto the podium. Uh, there's a guy, Jordan, that I coach on here who's just really, really strong, and he's starting to pick up his fitness really well. And I'm not trying to brag about him because I coach him. I just think that he may be one of these kind of guys that just shows up and doesn't know what he's really made of. This is his first time at the championship. And sometimes rookies can come in and just blow the doors off of everybody because they don't know how to manage their pace. And they just thread the needle. Yeah, Jordan and... Jordan and Colin have the ability to get caught up in the race as it goes on. You catch one guy who's ranked higher than you. You catch the next guy and you just start feeding right up, right like we saw Chris do last year, just pick people off right up the chain of command there. And I think you're right on about this rock zone. I was talking with a few of the guys earlier and they think it could be up to 60 to 80 meters extra of rock zone with how they have the arena set up on every station because you run all the way to the far side of the rock zone and then exit out through the through the out and so it's it's so long that the last run is going to be like five or six hundred meters short uh maybe not quite that three or four hundred meters short so that extra 80 meters of rock zone on every single run means that your thousand meter run has started before you realize it has some people like to just get out of the rock zone and then get to work but you're forced to get to work here in the rock zone and if you have to turn multiple times i think someone like orion kent who's decently athletic has quick feet and accelerates in and out of things quickly has a chance to take advantage of that where a long strider really may not understand how much time they're not taking advantage of in the rock zone yeah all right i'm willing to change my bet twenty dollars dylan scott third dylan place. scott is third i already, I already yep. took him for third dang it dang it dang it dang it i want him all right, I didn't say my picks on the female side. I think Lauren and Meg uh, put on a show today, and I still think Michaela hangs on for third. She is just so good. I do not think this course suits her because she's not had that championship moment. She is uh, seems like more of a rhythm-based athlete. There's going to be chaos in there, and you're the only one of us two that has run this arena style, but you can see the chaos from the outside. Watching in Vegas, it's disorienting for athletes. Which way am I exiting? Where am I entering? With that grid style, are they coming down or coming back on their first or their second loop? You don't get that clean line of sight. And with someone, she's only done what? Two? Three events? As the men are off oh my here. God, who's not leading the way? Look at that person's turnover. Oh my God. 
God. You know, I, all right, so I'm going um, Lauren, Meg, Linda. All right. Linda needs it. She was poised to be that next person taken over, and someone has taken that from her each each time so far. So that'd be big for her. I would really like it if Linda won the thing. Shannon like striking distance multiple times. Yeah. And typically, when you can repeat that same type of performance over and over and over, you're ready for a breakthrough. Now, David Magida and Dylan both have a similar strategy today. They want to hang out, chill in the back of the pack, and really work the second half. And as we've seen in these championships, if you get disengaged, you're done. So they yep. either both need to be very aware of it, or whoever starts the furthest back could find themselves just never able to catch up. But we saw Dylan running about two-thirds of the way through the pack there. I didn't have eyes on Dave. We have Ronkovich up front with, uh, looks like Tim Benish. Ronkovich look running on the moon. He yeah, has like a, a bounce. A bounce. He's a bounce to him. Kent though, right on his shoulders. These three here really like Kent. to ski. Kent already looks tired. <laughs> he always looks like, he always has that shoulder roll going. He's fine. Yeah. And then he got Sandy. Is he wearing yes. a, like a like a skull cap or is that a bandana? I'd be pumped if that was a skull cap, but I think he's got a bandana on. So all the names that we talked about vying for top three are in the top six, other than Dylan Scott. He's going to be sitting back a little bit more, doing his thing. Those top four or five guys do not mind getting out fast, and they're all going to try to ski in the, you know, probably, uh, what would you think, 330s? Low 330s? I think there's probably about three guys that will be able to do that, and then there's three guys that will be, you know, high 330s, and there'll be three guys that are like 340, you know? Yeah. Um, but the question isn't whether they can ski it. It's can they ski it and then handle the American sled? That's what we're all waiting to see answered. We've been waiting for this for several years, and now either the Americans are going to be proved right, or the Europeans are going to be like, guys, we told you this was not a thing. I'll bet you another twenty dollars that Kent gets out of the sleds. I think Kent gets out of the sleds first by forty seconds. Out of the sled push by forty seconds, and Dylan Scott is in second. Okay. If Dylan Scott's in second by the, uh, I'll take that bet. I say All Dylan right, Scott 20. is not. Another twenty. He, he will not be. We, th now there's a lot riding on this. I, I don't know what I'm getting for my per diem, bet. but I got a $400 bet on the uh, first touch down for the full Chiefs. Chiefs, Chiefs are taking it. You're a wild man. I can't hang with you when it comes to betting. It's an addiction. I don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got my phone up here. I'm gonna be checking splits on this, and look at them running three wide. I like the Kent settle down on the rail here. Let Ronkovich run a few extra meters per lap. Let and look at it look at look Sandy like out wide. Sandy's running probably ten extra He's meters on this earth. thousand. Just ooh. so the entry to every one is a hairpin. That is not great for these athletes, but getting there first helps. So, if you watch the film from Vegas, we came out so much harder. Yeah. Go like it, it was. It was aggressive. Like, and you can already tell people are I, are more settled here. You can just watch their feet. Um, the cadence yeah, is when a you lot see a slower. Pack. Yeah. Look at Kent Look got at to the end. He got to the first one. Who the heck almost pulled that 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 skier go over to him? I like this a lot. When you have guys packed up there, they're running within themselves. When you get it strung out, like Lauren Weeks is probably going to do on the women's side when they take off in about 25 minutes here, she's going to string the field out. This field wasn't strung out. There were two big packs. Is Ronkovich just like racing in like a like a regular gym sport or champ shirt? I don't know. I think he's wearing like a sleazy 80s cutoff. Look at this. I support Wait, that. Until you see him. Yeah, wait for it, wait for it, right here. See that? Just looks like a basic cotton tee. That's a gangster move. That's that's an alpha move. Yeah, it holds on to that 
cools you down, keeps you wet, the core temperature down. That's how that's how cotton yeah. works, right? Look at that. He's talking. Looks. Kent's got a little drama going on. A little drama going on in Kent's corner. Oh shit! Sorry, I know this is a family channel. Oh dang it! The Back last thing you want to do on those machines, which are already nerve wracking because you can't quite tell what the people around you are doing, is have someone come up and start fiddling with your machine or your strategy. You see Dylan there staring at his screen? No. He had his he head fully be. over his shoulder looking at his partner's screen. I don't think there's any point in looking over anybody else's screen. I mean, at this point, they're probably about 200, 250 in. You know, everybody gets so excited. When I get on the ski, here guys start pulling 28 to the low 130s, and I hold 138, 139 the rest of the ski. And in the beginning, I must look like a superstar. Yeah. And you don't want to get caught up in that looking at my screen because it's not it is not a good indicator. Well, and at this point, the, the, the men are generally seasoned enough that they should know what they can pull. And a strain outside of that helps no one's race. So you get on there, you look at your screen, you breathe, you try not to get caught up in being super tense because the race doesn't start until you hit those sleds. You know what's the most monotonous and, and just challenging thing is getting on the rower. You're just sat there next to somebody and you're like, dang it. I'm going to be sitting here next to this guy for the next two minutes and there's nothing I can do about it. And he's just going to sit next to me and I'm going to sit next to him. I hate and it. you never see the numbers you quite want to see on your row. Skier, you can surprise yourself and be like, oh, I'm having a good one. By the time you get to the row, I feel like you're always a few seconds per 500 slower than what you'd want to be doing. I did a high rocks test today and I did it all based off of heart rate and I try to really like get into the zone and, and row is one of those kind of th things where you just should sit there because it's like a 141 and like a 46, 145 is so insignificant but it could chip you over the edge in the wrong way. Yeah, and it's just that little oomph of pushing back a little harder. That's the end of your lunges. Yeah. Dude, I really do like the High Rocks crew. Such yeah, good they're a good staff. crew. All right, so who's your bet? Who's getting out of here first? I think Kent's coming off this thing. I don't know. He had that drama. He had that drama. I bet you somebody comes off before him. Oh, no. Is that Kent there first? There he is. I mean, they but all look at those four. Together. Those four gentlemen all ski the exact same way, and I think that is best case scenario for Ryan Kent, is that they all have to ski in the mid 330s. And everyone comes in running a little half step faster because they're gonna wanna catch right back up to him on this run. And that's one of those things that puts your heart rate up one little notch, and he wants every amount of their exertion going before they hit the sled so that they get punched right in the gut on that. I wouldn't race like that. Terrible idea. But Kent's coming out with a cook. Look at this. Now they're starting to open up. You remember I said the first lap they were mm -hmm. just like chilling? It was just a, the lazy river. Now Kent's trying to show off. And I think he's, as I said, I'm telling you right now he's going to get out of the sleds 40 seconds up. I'm going to get my timer out. Don't make me. Yeah, and they might, they might make a move on the first leg of the sled. And if they do, that's a bad sign for them. They're going to feel good if they put some time into him on that down in the back, but I think that right there is kind of the kiss of death. This, you're right, this this is not a hey, race to play, by the dog down. to play shuffling right back and forth. This is a race to run your own race for the first three stations minimum. So right now it looks like we have Michael Sanbosch right ahead of us here pulling up on Ryan Kent. Uh, Sandy there removed his shirt after the ski erg. And so he's gonna be our first uh, shirtless gentleman on screen there. Kent's got a sleeveless shirt Ooh, on. We got and some then, skin out. Yes, we do. Already running They're past Kent. people on the track. Is Kent and Sambatch right next to each other? Yeah, Sambatch is going after this. That's a level of confidence that either wins you a world title or gets you into trouble on a slide real quickly. This is gonna be like a toddler running into a brick wall. Wait, wait for this to hit. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I gladly, oh, I gladly hope that I'm wrong, but I don't think so. Well, we want to see a great race, and we know that uh, Sandy has that 
upper ceiling potential because he's been leading races before cracking. But we also know Kent runs pretty aggressively off the ski erg. And if they, those two are gapping the field here and Sandy is now gapping him, he is running at a rate that we generally don't see people run at this early in the race. I'm gonna pull up the ski erg stats here. Nothing How do you coming get these through. stats? Is it is it is it live? The live live timing mats are not populating yet. But when they come through, I'm gonna keep hitting refresh here. He's up to about a 10 meter lead now. And he started 10 meters down. No heart rate strap on him, so he's not running according to any sort of metric or biofeedback he's just he's feeling the feeling the race and going for it he looks it's really a gutsy relaxed. Move. how yeah, far out yeah, is and he, he runs now. well i would guess he's got 15 meters look like now. he's got guys to run <laughs> that's interesting it just seems like they've all settled into a haste again and maybe it's yeah. just the venue and the way that it's designed so it's not recognized or represent how fast these guys are running. They're long but straightaways. Do you have do you have the metrics on uh, the first lap, what their thousand was? No, it's uh it's not pulling up. I'm gonna hit refresh again here. No. Skier nothing's coming up. The database is down. You know what? Good. Right, now we, we go. just get here to sit go. here and guess. Here I'm going to get go. a clock on this. Okay. You got a clock going? Yep. Oh, only two seconds. Kent, Kent closed down through the rock zone. Look at Sandy pushing a little harder. Now they've evened out a little. Oh, Sandy's still taking inch by inch. Do you think it um, it matters who breaks first? No. I mean, that's just smart pacing. I mean, dude, I never make it across the whole way. All of them just Maybe. did. Top five, top six, maybe seven, all just went unbroken the first round. That is, that's just, I mean, either they're all in monster shape, bigger than what we've seen, or it's really asking for some carnage in the second half here. I don't want to be gloom and doom here, but, ooh, the excitement of will they, won't they? Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Kent's chasing him. Refuses to quit. Will he make it across the line again? They're gonna blow up, dude. Okay, so let's let's just say here, we love playing the blow-up game. It makes every race exciting. Oh, Kent started first. If yeah. they all have a blow-up happening, who weathers that storm the best? I mean, dude, Kent's literally about to be a third length across, and it's 113. Look at this. Dan Badge is going across all the way. Kent broke, which is good. Someone had to start pacing themselves. This is playing right into Dylan Scott's hands right here. And David Magida. I can't really tell where they're at. Look, there's big pauses now. Big pauses. Yeah. Is this the fourth this is where you they're realize. on right now? Yep, this is it. Is this the fourth link? Dude, they're about to finish their sled pushes in like two minutes and fifteen seconds, which is they're gonna way break two or three times this one. No, dude, he's this is impressive. Look at that. That's a long break. Maybe I'm. This is depressing because you have for, for the people trailing. They come in and they think we're only this, like dude. twenty seconds He's out down. Of here. He's out of here in two seventeen. They're both out in under two twenty. I mean, we don't see that type of push over here. Can you count There's those plates? Guys. I don't know. There's a lot of guys finishing off in really good times. Yeah, and there's a pass already by Kent. And uh, Sandy did not respond one bit. Okay. Is that Rock Zone? Kent's a Rock Zone runner. 
Look at these guys. Everybody's Kenta's... out is under three minutes. I was blown away. I was dead wrong. This poll is going to be very interesting. So if you came into this 20 seconds down thinking, all right, I'm good, and they're already coming back towards you, you have to be out of your mind. What is going on here? Do I do I dare commit or do I dare back off? What? How does this affect them? Dylan's out now. Damn, is, I was totally that, wrong about Dylan. He's got another sled. That's uh, Vanish, I believe. Vanish. He runs well. Yeah, he does. He's efficient right now. Yeah. Is Rankovic way... He's not even in sight. Unless he's already there he passed. Is. That was him. That was him just there. That's not something we've seen from him. In the, the World Championships, he shadowed Kent the whole time at North or at uh, European Championships. He and Sandy shadowed each other the whole time. I've not seen him disconnected from a podium yet. You had some guys there do a three-minute sled and lose time and have to be thinking, like, I just, I just had a great sled push. And people are out of sight. Who are these guys who are still in here? All right, sled, sled push. Oh, everything's all messed up here. What do you mean? This is the last guy getting here. out. Skier, let's see. I'm gonna check Skier again. Nothing Kent, yet Kent's for Skier. Dom dominantly gliding away. And this is his world. You you give him a lead in a race, and he is Superman. How much are these so guys get paid for this? Do not know the prize structure breakdown on this race, so they they've got a hustle here getting these uh, these ropes on. Supposedly we got data on this thing. Slide deck. Let's see. Jason, uh, can you say again prize money? Ooh, seven thousand, thirty-five hundred, two thousand, fifteen hundred, one grand. Ooh, damn. Big drop a off, one to two. Dang, dude. You could buy a Kia Sophia with that kind of money. A Sophia, huh? A, a Kia Sophia, dude. Don't get mistaken. Ooh. Yeah, dude. Look at that. Michael is running is running dead. Starting to get those Hogan. shoulder blades pulled backwards by that invisible rope. Hogan's at my house right now, and he's texting me all the time. He's giving me data that I don't even know. Why is Hogan at your house? Why would not Hogan here. be at my house? Is a better question. Why isn't he racing? Um, uh, because you know, Southern Southern California where is where it's at. Who wants to be in Chicago in Jan uh, February? Listen, I I traveled south to get to this race. This is spring break for me. That's true. Come on, Looks like Alec go. came through there. Alec's moving through. Okay, let's see when when's uh Kent getting in. Let's just tech get this lead check. Lead check, lead check. Yeah, this is tough without the, hi the timing mats registering. I wonder if they didn't move them with the with the arena. If they didn't have time to get those moved over from the uh, the original open course. There's Dylan. Dylan running ahead of Rankovic. Dylan is two strides ahead of the guy we picked to take second. Where is um? Where's Megita and all this? I haven't seen a David sighting, but we're about to have a little read on whether I'm about to be $20 richer or not. What's that? Well, we saw we saw Dylan come in ahead of Rankovic, but where what? is he going to be? Wow. How Where did he beat him back to the sled? Sorry. I didn't I don't know see if that that's coming. possible. Maybe he roped it. Really, really? Up. What did we miss? All right, so one of one of two things. Either Kent faded and he made well, a move, this or is way Kent overran. Than I thought it would. Maybe Kent overran think... the entrance. Kent probably faded, dude, because these guys are all right next to him. Oh. Kent's out pulling I him right now is... by a slight bit. 
I know, but dude, this is where Kent starts to crumble. If these people are next to me in the middle of a championship race, that's where you start to doubt yourself. You're like, what? These guys? Because he thought, he just, he made a post that he's the greatest High Rocks athlete in the world right now. Even over me. And then all of a sudden, the guy that took, I don't know, Michael Sandbach, what, four or five minutes behind him at World Championships? I think that would mess with my mind. Just saying. You know, it's one thing to leave the last station next to him and come in next to him. It's another thing to blow past him on the run and then come and in then together. And then get beat. I know, this oh. is what I'm talking about, dude. Ooh, this is, this is juicy. Oh, okay. This is racing. I'm this is the difference here between going for a fast time and being able to execute a championship race under duress, because there is a lot of duress happening right now. Did you bring any snacks? What are you eating and drinking right now? I pounded some sushi right before this, and I've got a Gatorade Zero sitting here because all the power lift, power lift is already gone. Had too many powers of too many bottles of power lift today. It's delicious. I got a cup of I coffee. Chill out on tastes the like crap. And I've got all these sodas around me. I'm starting to crash. I should have brought I more. You're a soda guy, dude. I drink more sugar than any ten human beings that you know combined. <laughs> so, so that's something to be proud of. What? I, dude, look at me. Specimen. Uh -oh. Dude, look, oh, Ryan fell, fell over. over. Oh, oh. The juice is on, dude! This is like one of those boxing fights where you slip, throw a punch. It doesn't Oof. It doesn't mean that you fell, it just means you effed up. On, and but that's still embarrassing. Bad. It, it does, that's what I'm judges. saying. Dude, he's ahead of him! He's ahead of him right now. Oh my god, the juice is on! Dude, if Michelle wins this fight, this is gonna be crazy. Who's Michelle? I call Michael, uh, Michelle. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm glad we're all on the same page here now. It gets under his Kent skin. Kent is, Kent's walking down to the other end. Yeah, dude, Kent popped. Damn, dude. I'm not, he's going to be like, he's going to be like that yet. Chinese, he's calling, the, he's like that Chinese balloon. It thought it was the shit until it got just over the Carolinas and then blown out of the sky. That is a very, very apt pop culture analogy right there here's here's the deal though of all the people to be leading him right now we have the one man who has quit more than one race while doing well so even though he seems to be on the up and up with his performance we still don't have a hundred percent confidence that he his mental game is bulletproof so it's it's really interesting to see him leave now with about five six seconds here with that confidence boost because i think with a guy who has shown the ability to blow up mentally, you want to keep pressure on him, but he's the one applying pressure. I'll bet. I'm impressed. I mean, it's already a significant, significant um, boost of success since the European Championships were like two weeks ago. Yeah, three, I think. All right, so Dylan's, Dylan's about to be done here. So third... Maybe fourth out is Dylan Scott. What did you say he was going to be? I said he was going to be second. Second. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna hold All that right. twenty right here on the table. Okay. And we're gonna it's see on, about that your final side. position now. That is really really good news for him because no one knows their work rate like Dylan Scott does. So my question now is, where is Mr. Megita? Nowhere to be seen. He's on vacation in the back of the. Interesting choice with Gatorade Zero. Just are you watching your figure? <laughs> you know, I like the taste, but no, I don't need all those empty carbs. You don't. I don't know, dude. Those Gatorade Zeros get me. They've got that like that kind of weird that that artificial sweetener in there that freaks me out. I really like things watered down. So anytime you give me a, a watered down version of something, it's it's marketing genius. You're, I'm going to buy it. You you're one of those kind of guys that pours a shot of scotch and cuts it with a little water. I mean, I wouldn't say a little water. A whole bathtub's worth. Dude, these gaps are I'm really open. I know his body is smooth. Look at that. He's not even nowhere in sight. 
There was a bit of this at Euros. He and uh, Rankovic did yo-yo a little bit, and his stride was looking truly fatigued to start the run after the push, and now he's suddenly back looking like Terminator mode. I'm gonna check again if we have any splits here. I don't know what the heck they're doing with this camera stuff, but I can't tell what the heck is going on. Are the girls about well, to go because, off? Yeah, girls are, women are about to start to go. Hunter, you have the view of all the cameras. The audience only sees the green camera. So oh, the audience okay. is doing just fine. Okay, it's like, I am confused. There you go, Rankovic. Rankovic. Right Way back. Venice, it looked like. I really do not know who these people are. But. I like your confidence announcing that, though. I, I wish I did. I'm trying to get some more data points. It's, it's hard to tell what they look like. Well, race right here to me, Burpee Broad Jumps, is the next station. 100 meters of burpee bra jumps. This is the race here. This is the race. The race will be broken up or brought back together right here. You cannot fake the burpee bra jumps. You can overwork well, on the sled accidentally. Can't overwork I the burpee bra the, jumps. I led the race um, in 2021 World Championships until the burpee bra jumps, and that's where I cracked. Yeah, and at so. this venue, at this venue two years ago, you, you broke the race open slightly before that, but your burpee bra jump cemented it. No one was coming back on you. Girl wearing a whole jumpsuit. That is uh, Michaela. She likes to run hot. It's like a turtle. So she is the she's the current world record holder. Oh, really? Meg That's the girl. It. Yeah, Meg said it, and then Michaela broke it a few weeks later. Stockholm? And then ended up taking... Uh, no, it might have... I thought it was a German course. I'd be wrong on that one. But then she was top three at, at European Championships in her second or third race ever. Short little jumps here. Real Not short jumps. Not a bad pace. This is why I don't like the, um, the, the uh, step-up burpees. Watch this. There's always one foot that loves to come in front of the other one. Yeah, and he's scooching his hands forward pretty good, but nothing egregious is happening. Damn, look at that jump. He can fall. Now, he's starting to jump a little farther. This just might be his style. He started that run behind Kent and got to work. He started pulling a little slower than got to work. He started jumping not super aggressive and then got to work. He might just be building into every station. Yeah. One thing in this sport that need to be cleaned up is the burpee standards. Like, David's burpee right there is really good. I'll, I'll admit, like, no offense to Michael, he's doing a really, really great job, but um, that's a Where dirty play to do from? that. I have no clue, but I was saying this was going to become something that, you know, this is where it gets really confusing on the grid when everybody's right next to each other. Like, I thought this race was way more gapped out, and there's now almost all Where's 15 Ken? athletes competing. Where's... Was that Magida or was that Kent? I can't tell at all. Well, either way, Dylan Scott's in third place right now, and he, this is one of his better stations. He does the the staggered step up, but he he's very very good with his cadence on it. That looks like Magida to me right there. Yeah, Magida's over in that second lane, right next to Sanbach. Sanbach. And this is a station David has historically, if he's gonna crack, you're gonna get him right here. His his European championship burpees were, I mean, kind of a disaster. And so to see him in second place here is really encouraging. If we're seeing this correctly. I don't know if it makes him second place. And maybe it doesn't. Dylan's out. Oh no, Sambach. Sambach is out. Those 
Those hairpin turns in the rock zone isn't are not that was nice after burpees. That impressively fast set of burpees. Yeah, and the women are off. Wow, look at how fast these girls are running. Jeez, this is way faster than the guys went. Yeah, and Lauren is so Lauren did this. I don't know if you rewatched European Championships, but Lauren took it to them from the gun, and Meg let her go. As did Michaela. Oh, and Michaela. Oh, down. girl down! Oh my gosh! It's the demolition. I was just about to say Meg is right on on uh, Lauren's shoulder, which we hadn't seen from her last time they raced, and Michaela was moving up right to her shoulder, and then I don't Here know if she cl got clipped, but she went down, and now there goes your strategy. There goes who your strategy on round one. Michaela, Michaela who, who went down. And who Gosh. knows how many people tripped behind her. And now you have Alondra just sitting there, I believe, I, in third place. I love watching the Tour de France when all the bikes are together and then one crashes and they all that's go. You. Uh, no, that's just a, that's just something that I like to watch late at night. Yeah. Well, Alondra Greenlee is sitting here in third, and she did this at European Championships. She engaged early, and she was rewarded for it with a PR and a great finish. Now, Michaela, who looked like her goal, look at that. The whole field got uh, tangled up in that. They're, they're all in a pack back there now, 50 meters down. I love seeing Meg commit to Lauren's pace, because you cannot come back on Laura the amount that she generally gaps people. So Meg is out here to just establish that fact. I think she's definitely the better of the two runners if I had to guess between her and Weeks. But she'd probably it's hold it back even, and use it. It's not even close on terms of just pure running metrics. She's run 1730, maybe under this year. And she's a fast runner. Uh, but the difference is that Lauren has some freakish ability to run really, really fast during a high rocks competition. I'm, I'm loving the fact that Meg is committed to this pace. And that is such a tough break for Michaela, getting trampled in the first 100, Damn, 200 still meters of the race. Out there on the That's rough. That is. Am I bored with Jordan over there? Jordan's getting spanked. Dang, Jordan, we're gonna have to buy you a beer. Yeah. Oh, they've got another length or two still. What is going on with the boys? My God, look how fast those girls are running. I think if the world was ending and they chose the Terminator and I was the person they were trying to kill, if they chose Lauren Weeks to be the Terminator, I'd be screwed. She's the one person I've always said, like, if she's chasing you to the end of the earth, that's the last person you want. Yeah. This is the first time in OCR or hybrid sports history that the female field is just far and away more dominant than the males. The women are usually three to five years behind the men in terms of depth of field and talent at the top. And that is not the case in hybrid racing right now. The top of the women's field is, I would say head and shoulders above the current men in this sport, seeing as you're not taking part. Wow. I don't know if that's an insult, but uh, no, I think the thing is, is because I bet you, I mean, CrossFit's really, really packed full of chicks that are very talented. I think mm -hmm. obstacle course racing, girls are less inclined to want to get involved in that kind of nitty gritty style of running. But high rocks mm -hmm. is just enough fitness, which is such a popular sport in the world right now, and just enough running where you'll get a lot of these really talented, you know, you know, post collegiate track track stars, really, really talented runners and people who love fitness coming in. And there's a big population of those people, I believe, that are just meant for this sport and um that's why i think it's an easy easy entry point for girls look at yeah. megan just beating the shit out of that ski gear lauren too they are aggressive skiers these girls are savages they really are i would love an update and on the no guys. disrespect and there's no disrespect to the men's field but the women's world record's been broken three times this year Okay, look you're, at that. You're not seeing this happen this is, on the men. This is pretty tight. Is that Magida? That's not Kent. That's Magida. 
We have That's no eyes on Ryan Kent. Magida's in second. Dylan is in third. And Sandy is in first by only a few seconds, it seems. Dude, I have a bad feeling like Kent dropped out. Yeah. Yeah, he's either dropped out or he's walking it in at this point. No, dude, he's gone. There's no way that these people have that dominantly finished ahead of him. I'm not going to lie. I would like some props on the fact that I said Megita may have this chance where he's been talking this big game for a long time. And this may be the chance that he finally nope, comes back there, and does There's something. Kent. Kent's right there. Wow. He's in fourth. I bet you Kent is sitting in a puddle of tears right now. Um, no offense, I love but I'm just telling you, that's, 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 the, that's the place you got to feel. I don't know what the heck happened. That battle up front is a you're you're on a razor's edge there. If you like you said Where? with your heart rate on that rower, if you overwork by just one little bit, you implode. Now look at Mike. It is impossible. Look at Mike's form right now is is uh, not great. I don't know if that's just no. how he typically rows, or if he's starting to fall apart. Because now he's starting to look over other people's rowers a lot, which ain't a good sign. No. You got Dylan Scott really relaxed. You got Megita relaxed. You got uh, Ronkovich relaxed. But look at Michael. Michael's pulling the fastest cadence, it looks like. He's going for it. It's just two guys you don't want closing on you. Megita is known for being able to close very hard on his runs when he's in the fight. Dylan closes this hard every single time. But you know what the thing is? None of these three men are known for their wall balls. So it's this could come down to wall balls and who who made the jump recently? Who's gonna just sink their teeth into those? Top three women have to be getting to the cl close to the end of their ski now, and we still have one, two, three, the order we expected. First place, Lauren. Second place, Meg. Third place, improbably, looks like it is still Michaela after falling on the first, the first run. Can you imagine, Hunter, getting to the championship, the one you've prepped for all year? and getting tripped and trampled in the first 200 meters of the race. I like that. That's, uh, you know, I liked watching those things in track and field where the guys will trip and then they'll come back and dominate. Some people can't handle it. In other people, it's the one thing they need to just put their mind to the side and let it rip. People is pulling like a caveman. He is pulling so hard. And he's up and out of there. All right. Sandbox out. If we could, okay, can we get eyes on the rower? Who's the next off here? It should be David Megiddo. Oh, he's got a bigger lead than I thought. But he's going slow, look at him. He's got a big lead, but the people who are chasing him are not the people who are directly behind him. There we go, there we go. Oh, 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 spicy, spicy. Megiddo's off. Kent, and Dylan's off. Still, still dragging ass. Look at him. He's not. He's not in his mojo. That's not a good pull. No. And here's the problem. Now, now, Sandbox is. He is running well so far, but he's alone, and he has two closers running side by side behind him. And you know how easy it is to get into a little bit of a lull on that run when you have no real carrot dangling right in front of you other than <laughs> the fear of getting caught. And those two are going to work together to try to run him down, but he doesn't look like he's running a fast pace right now. Dylan Scott's more dangerous than Megita, but Megita's faster. So Megita, yeah. I think Megita would love nothing more to say that he was a North American championship champion. So there may be that inside of his blood where he's just going to really fight like a dog to get it. But then there's Dylan Scott, who I just know is just lethal. He just won't stop. We had a shot there of uh, Ronkovich on the rower that Sandy was using, which means he came in an entire station behind. We've not no seen this way. ever from him. No, they, pull, they, pull, they pulled the rowers out, dude. They pulled the rowers out. Oh, oh yeah, I was wrong. 
You're right. Oh, down another trip. Tripped over a kettlebell. You're right. They're pulling those out. I was incorrect on that. You That's take right. That 20 Terrible back. data. I'm gonna take that twenty back. There you go. There you go. Make us burn. Look at that. Lauren, Lauren here, Weeks. running in first. Expect nothing less. I told a, a bunch of, of people. Here. A couple of girls reached out to me for um, some training tips, and mm -hmm. they were they asked me this, that, and the other thing, and they're like, "Oh, what do you think about this?" And I said, "Honestly, I said I don't think you should look at anybody else except for Lauren Weeks. You're just waiting for her to come back off this pregnancy, and that's what you got to be worried about." And mm -hmm. she did exactly that. I had said oh. that I thought she would be back in Dangerous by Worlds. She's back months ahead of that. And Alex looked like, I mean, not Alex, Michael looked like he was running well again there. He starts each run with a lull. He took a gel in there, and then he gets to work. It's a very interesting strategy. Do you know anyone else who does a, that? He took a gel in? Yeah, he was jogging, took a gel, and now he's back hammering again. Wow, I don't have the guts to he, eat anything during one of these races. He's doing a fartlek race here. He's starting some stations and runs slow, and then he's finishing on each one of them. Are you surprised to see Meg down like this right now? I mean, she's still in second place, but that no, dude. Look at her cadence. Look at her cadence. Look at her. No, not at all, dude. Look at her cadence versus weeks, and the way that—that's uh, the thing that people don't notice—is the cadence. If you can see yeah. weeks' cadence, it's slower. And there's Megita. That's that's. That's close, and I don't know like uh, how tough Michael is, but if he doesn't grab those kettlebells and rip, Megita could catch it. Yeah, this is uh, lunges. We've seen him have... He got passed on the lunges by Ronkovic at the European Championships. So it's a sample size of one, but when we most recently saw him, Ooh. he had a low point on the lunges. My boy Jordan is suffering on that rower. He's doing the that stripper is not. Pull. That is not the form of someone who's loving their Look race. Look at that. Oh, man. I can't but he's going. He's working. That's one of those kind of feelings where you're at the restaurant drinking, and they're starting to put away the chairs and everything right in front of you, and you're still there drinking beer. That's one of those kind of dark moments. All right. Look at that. Meg caught her. Oh my god, they're right next to each other! The heat is on! Alright, let's see here. Oh, this is so good. Wow, this is dude, I told you, Vegeta. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Is that Scott? Oh, dude, Sam yeah. Mitch is dead. No, I think he's a, late, he's a lap ahead. No, I don't think so at all, dude. They got in together. Did they? I think he's a yeah. lap ahead. Am I going to lose another 20? Uh no, 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 you lost, you're going to lose 20. Oh, look at that, Megita's capping. The heat is on. Oh, oh, dude, that American muscle is starting. Hey, dude, we're looking at, we're looking at like some, like a basic, what's a, like a Fiat versus a Dodge Challenger right now. I think, obviously, Michael is a really, yeah, really efficient guy. Yeah, it's a little disrespectful. Guy. No, I don't know. What's a British car? An Alfa Romeo or something? Sure. No, that's not. That, that's French. I don't know. But I will say, Megita, you know, was a powerhouse. So let's yes, give Michael look at Dylan. more respect. I think I, I, I respect Michael. I for sure do. I think he's a really talented athlete. I spoke heavily on this. I said of everybody in the European Championships, he was the most improved athlete since World Championships. So that was really impressive. Absolutely. And he's showing it again today. So I'm speaking highly of him. I know I made tease. But oh, the thing I that I have to admit here. is... Megita, I Scott. was wrong. Megita may have his chance right now, dude. Now, lunges are a total, uh, it's a dog fight. And then wall balls are a yeah. second dog fight. So those are the two killers that they uh, can predict yet. And there's nothing but you can do about say, it. You can't, like, put my you can't fake it at this stage. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. If I had to put my cash on anybody, Dylan Scott's the one who's going to walk out of there on top. David out. Look Dylan at that. Out. Look at that. Oh, oh. You, you were this right is... again. 
Oh, 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 oh. oh my goodness. Boy. This is where it goes, dude. I bet you Magida's wheels start to pick up right now. You can already see the gap starting. And Dylan Scott is one of these kind of guys. He's like the Energizer buddy. He's not going to stop on the lunges or wall balls. No. David is already writing his post-race I told you so to the entire world. And Dylan's sitting oh, here like, we're only 35 minutes in. I'm just getting warmed up. This will be Sandy's coming Magee, back. Is this McGee? This is McGee's second time. Op, op, this will be McGee's second opportunity to compete at World Championships, which I think will mean a lot to him. Lauren just put a healthy gap on Meg, and Alondra just beat Meg off the sled. If I'm seeing that correctly, who's Alondra? Give me some data on Alondra, her. Alondra, Alondra Greenley. Well, Dr. Alondra Greenlee to start with, so not only does oh, yeah, she have yeah, yeah. it physically, but you know, intellectually she's up at the top of this field. And she has kind of came a little late to the High Rocks game and has just rapidly improved. And she had her best showing three weeks ago in uh, Maastricht for the European Championship, and now she's over here looking to string it together again. What did she take at Euros? I believe she was fourth. I'm going to double check that. Because now that I say it, I don't have a ton of confidence in it. Where's my Linda? Yeah, Alondra was fourth. Fourth at championships in Europe. She's, you know, weeks, as I said, it doesn't look like she's running with any, like she's affected at all. <laughs> Yeah, Woo! both both Michaela and uh, Meg can just give it to Lauren on on a run, on a 10k, in a 5k. But once you get everyone tired, Lauren loses the least amount of pace from her normal running pace to her really fatigued running pace. She just has that ability to grind out the miles no matter what she's doing. The little engine that could. Who's this? I don't know who the hell these people are. I'm getting messages from all these people. Tom Hogan, this is some of his things. Um his prediction is that if, if uh, Sandbag stays out in front, he'll win. But if he d loses it, he'll he'll um, loses his lead. He'll lose, which already happened. And now he's trying to say the travel's too big of a factor. Tom trying to support his lo his locals. Did you ever win a say, world championship overseas? I did. I did. Um, I'll tell you guys some crazy stories. I won 2020, but 2021, the travel really did affect me. I got all this blood pooling in my legs, and it hurt me a lot. Um, yeah. It was really weird. I'd never experienced anything like that before. But in 2020, I took these sleeping pills to knock myself out on the plane. I literally was almost unconscious walking through the airport. I bumped into, uh, what's the name of the guy who won uh, Spartan Race World Championships? Uh, Sergey. Paraligan. Sergey. I bumped into him in a, in a layover, and then I like passed out again for the next two days. I basically slept for two days straight when I got there, and I finally came out of like this whole lull, and I, I woke up and I felt fine, but I didn't do that when I went back in 2021, and it messed me up big time. Mm. All right, so, here's Megiddo. He outran Dylan again, again there. He's got a five, six, six oh second nine. lead. Wow, this is not a good lead. Sandy came in right with Dylan, but lost two strides just picking the thing up look and getting going. Look how slow Sandbag's cadence is right now. Well, and Dave's oh, no, tapping started. on each one. Dave's Dave's tapping on each step, and Dylan is going straight through. Yeah, I told you, dude. Dylan's Dylan's tapping now too. Dylan's a tough guy right now. Both of these He's the guys. One that I, it, oh, I love it. I expect Dylan to fade the least, though. I bet you'll come out of here in first place. Yeah, he, he's he's the guy with, in theory, 
he has the lowest ceiling, but he has the highest floor. Like he's not gonna smash any one of these things in a way that blows your doors off, but he is not gonna fade on a single one of these events. And sometimes that's enough. We saw that with Chris Rogowski. Or Rogowski. That that's enough to win a world title sometimes if you just don't ever fade. Matt, there she goes, dude. Leach is still absolutely dominating it. What do you think your predict what do you think the prediction is on time finishing here? Do you think anybody will break sixty minutes? We're at fifty minutes right now. They've still got four minutes of run plus rock zone. Uh, the last run is gonna be, yeah, four minutes. Another three, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I think the winner's gonna break. I don't think we're gonna be well under, but I think you're gonna be looking at high fifty eight, low fifty nine if they have a monster set of wall balls. I don't think you can put it down more than twice. Well, let's just say the average lunge is like 345, 330. That's going to bring us up. And then we have like another 340 run. So that's going to bring you up into the high 50, like sixes, 55s. And yeah, they'd have to have like a 330 wall ball. Yeah. You get two, maybe three set downs in that. You think that's about yep. right in terms of a fast time? Now, you could put it down five times and win, but I don't think you're going to be seeing someone go 58 with more than two or three set downs. I did 100 wall balls today. It was a dance with the devil. That was a tough thing to do. I Weeks did doubles really... this morning with Rich Ryan. How was that? We came through to the final station. He started wall balls. And the man just never stopped. He just went 100 unbroken. I didn't have to do a single wall ball. And that is the best way to run a high rocks. Yep. Alondra has having herself a race. And can you tell who we have in fourth down there? Uh, that I Linda? think that I think that's Linda. Yeah, she looks tall. Um, looks like Linda Blair in fourth here. Which, if you had to Look rank the women in this field, this is what you'd rank. Now, Meg's made a move Leaks. here on Alondra. Weeks is just dominating. She walked out of there. Oh, oh, oh! Are they going? Are they running across for another pull, or are they done? Yeah. No, they got another pull. They have two more. They have this, and then they've got to come back, I believe. Oh, Weeks is still pulling. Yeah, she's got to get it down and then bring it back. I think you end on this side. I've got to be right about one thing today on this coverage. You're that commentator that knows nothing about the sport. You're just really enthusiastic. Like, damn, look at those ropes. These girls are tough. I kind of came in here blind. I don't really know what's going on. I've done a bunch of these, but that's not it. Have you got to this point in a race with someone still on you? Where the men are at today, lunges? Or has it been, if you get to no. the lunges, you've been in the clear? I'm in the clear. There's two races that I really banged up, and they were back-to-back. -back. I... It was 2021 where I just showed up out of shape, and then 2022 where I just was in the middle of a, a training block that, you know, I hit the time that I thought I would hit, but Kent was just better prepared. And, you know, I'm a really big believer in periodization. Like, you have to just keep on building layers to a peak where I, I hit it. I hit my ultimate goal later on, but um, nine times out of ten, I really like to just run in the front and finish in the front. But... Yeah, look at that. Is that Kent right now? Look yeah, at him, dude. Yeah, that's Kent there. He's, I mean, he's that's that of tough Rockovich feeling, there. dude. That's that really tough feeling that, honestly, I... It, I've been there. And it's a, it's a tough place to be, dude. You're in limbo. All right, I got a clock on this gap here. Meg's got one more pull in her, I think, after this one. A little tug to get her crossed. She's out. What's the difference? Uh, 15 seconds. Seven, well, that's tight. Maybe, maybe. Wow, Linda's maybe right 18. out. Oh! These girls are all on top of each other, dude. This is crazy. I like this. Linda is having herself the race that we hoped she would. 
Because Lauren's not gone. 17 seconds? 17 seconds is not the end of this race. Now, what was interesting at the European Championships, both Lauren and Meg and maybe Alondra went unbroken on wall balls. That's gangster, so, dude. I still haven't pulled that off. It really is. And so you have to win this race on the lunges and the run coming into the wall balls now, unless you're just confident that when everyone goes unbroken, you're going to have the fastest cadence. But generally on the men, you can come through and say, I know that if I if I go oh, unbroken, I win He is on wall balls already. Is he in first place? Yes, he is. What's his lead here? That's a tight... Where's where's Michael? Dylan's on wall balls too. Magita's looking way better than Dylan is though. His cadence is a little quicker. He's going about, it looks like he's getting three or four reps in for every four or five of uh, of David's. David's out repping him every four to five reps. And Sandy just came in. I don't know if that's uh, Graham or Dave Claxton on the camera there, but can you flash up with your hands uh, the number of reps that the leader is on right now, if possible? I think 31 is what I heard. That's it, Matt. Good job. Yeah, I bet you these guys finish in 58 minutes, dude. I think they're within five reps of each other right now. Dylan Scott, though, look at him, dude. He's just a junkyard dog. He ain't going to quit. He's got too much fight in him. Uh -huh. And there's oh, no man. question about depth on those. Dude, if he goes 100 unbroken, I will be so pumped. But at this point, I, I don't even care how they finish. These three gentlemen right here, all three proved exactly what they set out to prove. I don't care what order they finish in. All three winding up on the podium. Sandy getting through any of his mental demons. David proving what he's told us all along he really is. And Dylan showing that he's made the jump that we thought he was capable of. We saw Sandy break. We saw Dave break. I haven't seen Dylan yet. He's going to need to go on really because his reps are slower. Oh, there it is. You know what's impressive about Dylan? There's nothing during this race where I was like, Dylan's killing it. Dylan just showed up at the end and just tracked him down. Yeah. And he got there a little earlier than I would have expected. You said he was going to be top that, two coming out of the sled. I thought he Kent was going to be eight. Is that Kent? Yeah, that's Kent. And uh, Rankovic right on him. So we both know what it feels like to crack in a high rocks. I'm impressed that Kent stayed on it. Oh my gosh, this is spicy, dude. Yeah, Magita's got it in the bag for sure. Magita, get your shit together. Pick up that ball. Sorry, I gotta stop. Can cussing. we get some? Can we get some background noise turned up just a little bit so we can hear the MC what the reps are? Please. It's like 80 for Dylan. Really? Oh my god, dude. If Dylan beats Megita, I'm gonna be mind blown. Okay. Yep. Oh, he's dropping, dude. Megita's got it. Megita knows he's got it. Wow, dude. Congrats. Come on, Megita. Pick that ball up. What are you doing, dude? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. This is killing this me is here. This is stressful. This is stressful. I'm, I'm sweating like crazy. Dude. Come on, Megita. Oh my god. Five more for a championship. Dylan's got to be within step and eight. David Megita. Oh, he's going to let them hear about it, too. David Megita, wow, wow, wow. 2023 High Rocks North American champion. After taking. Eighth place three weeks ago at Euros. Maybe ninth. Dylan's Dylan's got three to go. Two to go. And this caps off a fantastic race for Dylan. 
If you had to take the entire audience and athlete corral of this building right now and not knowing anything about them, no one would have picked Dylan. I love what he's doing. Wow. Well, it looks like uh, Sandy is going to go third place at Euros and third place at North Americans. Which will be the top aggregate finisher for both of those. That's a tight spread. I got this video from Mo sent to me today. Did you watch video? No, I did not. You should go. I'll forward it to you. That's got to be rough after making a statement like this. And I don't even know if he's going to finish in fourth place. Yeah, unfortunately, if he's uh, he and Rankovic have been together for the last few stations, but it's tough to go backwards and then do anything on the wall balls. Look at Dylan still jumping around. If they had to all run it again in 15 minutes, Dylan wins by 10 minutes. Yeah, the engine. They uh, you know, who he reminds me of is Mark Allen from Triathlon. They called him the Grip. Okay. Like there's nothing you could do. If you're out there on course, it's just a matter of time for the grip of death to come get you. And that's Dylan Scott. Now, only one person might might enter this event, but if they did a 24-hour High Rocks World Championship, I'm betting my entire life on Dylan Scott. Dylan Scott smells like, like, like two-week-old gym sweat every time I see him. I feel like he is always working out. He, I don't even think it's close. I bet he has 20 to 25% more training hours per week than any other athlete in this field. I've never seen someone outside a triathlon train the hours that this man trains. Ronkovic, there you go, he took out Kent. For Ronkovic. 102. Wait, oh, and who is this sneaking across? There's Kent. No, dude. no, that's Kent's not, not even in. The we have Venish, and who snuck in just ahead of Venish? Venish. I don't know. Can't see his face. Look at look at Kyle, dude. Coach Kyle. Jeffrey. Oh, one hundred two thirty. Wow. We have Jeffrey Boyson snuck in just ahead as well. Oh my goodness. And Lauren Weeks back at it doing exactly what she does every single time. Dude, she doesn't even look like she's trying. She's just on a cruise. This is unreal. What do you think her finishing time's gonna be? Look at I don't know, they, they weren't that fast smile. times on the men. This is Dave's best moment of his life. Marriage, nope. First child, nope. This one's it right here. The only way this 100%. could have been better for him is if you were in this race and he beat you. That is the only thing missing from this moment for him. Not a chance. Not a chance. I'm excited, dude. I'm excited to come back and race against these guys. It's inspiring to watch. Sitting at home, exercising, and drinking beer too much. What I like about this race is that it showed that the European men, their depth and their parity over there is very, very solid. They just put five people all within a minute or so of our second, third, and fourth best uh, male athletes. That is really, really good. That is a solid showing. And like you said, the overseas travel is, is real. It is yeah. real. It's difficult to do. I've traveled yep. internationally for three races, and none of them did I feel like myself. You know, I really think that the sport of high rocks is just not as developed here in the United States as it could be, because there's so many opportunities of sports in the United States. At any given time, you could go to Athlons, 10 marathons, 10 CrossFit events, a high rocks event or a DECA event. 
around the United States. Like there was a DecaFit event this morning in Austin, Texas, and now here, over in the UK and Germany and across Europe, dude, High Rocks is like probably the most populated uh, fitness event that you got out there. It's just, I think that's why there's a lot more of a dense population of athletes there. Yeah, and this is a European company. It's kind of like Spartan for the U.S., where Spartan started here and it developed athletes here. High Rock started overseas. That's it's homegrown and it spreads much quicker on your on your home soil. And right now we have Lauren Weeks here. I'd love to know the gap that she has right now. But what do you think she's heading to row? Well, she did sled pulls and burpees. Yeah, she's got to be on row. This is kind of last chance Better. for these women. She's just hanging out, pointing, saying what's up to people. I really hope she's asking a question like, is this my last lap? Do I get to turn in? Because if she's just having a conversation, this is bad. This is bad news. And I know the women are on the screen right now, but I don't want to kind of short sell what Ryan Kent did today. When you run for the win like he did in a sport like this, it's boom or bust. This sport to me is like the marathon. If you go for the win, there's a real good chance you don't end up finishing. You can run within yourself and maybe PR or sneak into the podium, but when you run for first place, it is a dangerous sport. And he went for it and still managed to hang on. Yes, he got passed by a few people on wall balls. But he came into wall balls as far as we could tell in fourth place. And that is a victory. That right there to me is impressive. Do you remember seeing um, a couple like months ago at the New York Marathon, that Brazilian guy who came out and ran the world record pace for like 18 to 20 miles? And he dropped yeah. a 422 and a 418 in the middle of it. Yeah, Do Nascimento, Nashi, nah, Nascimento maybe. He did the that same thing at the Olympics. So he blew up in the Olympics and didn't finish, and he did it again at New York, but he got like six or seven miles further. And that's the kind of mentality you need to eventually be a world champ or set a world record is being unafraid to just go after it. And right now, here we have what I would say are the three top-ranked women in the world all on the rower at the same time. And here comes Alondra, it looks like, in and forth. So Michaela has made the pass on Alondra, but Alondra's a pretty strong rower. Hogan, what are you trying to do? What's up? You leaving? Yeah, I'm down with you guys. Um, what? Yeah, these are uh, these afterwards. online results. I'm not gonna go over oh, the we hit. I finally have a little bit here. Official Thank times you. for the men: Magida 59:11, Dylan Scott 59:45, Michael Sanbat one hour 27 seconds, Alexander Rankovich moved into fourth 102 flat, Jeffrey Wasson 102.10, Tim Venish 102.12. Just two seconds behind, and then Ryan Kent finished across the line seventh in 102.37, just by coming into that station in fourth. And then we had Colin Stiefert. This might be the high riser of the day. Colin Stiefert, eighth at 103.23. Florian Gass, ninth, 104.02. Patrick Grew, 104.16. And 11th so far, Jonathan Wynn, 104.23. We are still waiting on four gentlemen to cross the line. We'll try to get a time on the gaps here from when Lauren leaves the rower to when Meg, assuming Meg and then Michaela and Alondra leave the rower as well to get an idea on what is this lead sitting at right now.
Right now we have two cameras on the women on the rower. When one leaves with Lauren, it would be great if we could keep the second one on the rower so we can still see the rest of these women and see what these time gas are. Sorry, I've got a bunch of crazy Irish people staying at my house. That'll do it. Meg you know, is really like, rowing upper body heavy on this thing. Uh, Lauren, the, a technician on the row, but she's a lot more compact and just finishing with her arms, where Meg is launching backwards, throwing her back, and then really cranking the arms. I mean, look at Meek's, Alondra, though. Yeah, she's ripping into it, too. The girls are just savages. Not a lot these of weaknesses are, are, on their end. There's, these are Amazonian women. You'd expect them if they had a bunch of spears and arrows, dude, you'd be in big trouble going to war against these ladies. They, they're just tough. Yeah, you don't want any part of this. This is kind of thing like if you had to choose someone to defend the human race in a high rocks against an invader, you'd be fine choosing any one of these. Yeah. Lauren's off. Oh my goodness, and Michaela's off with her. What a move. Meg's off six seconds behind. That's a big pair of beans. She, this is the girl that took a dump in the middle of the run, right? In the beginning? Yeah, and this is the current world record holder. Now in Euro, she was gapped by almost a minute early on and just never made it up. And right now here, she's coming off the row. The back half of the race is here. And she's Look at sitting that. She's tracking on her. Lauren's shoulder. God dang, this is spicy. I don't know if she's sitting on her or if she's trying to hang on, but I do like that she starts the run sitting on her. Is that Chris Kablowski she... right there? Yep, there's Chris. Man. Oh, Lauren's starting to stretch it a little bit. Meg came off only about six seconds behind these two, but I cannot believe the move Michaela's made on these last two stations. You know, in, yeah. in Euros, she had one of the slowest sled pushes and the fastest sled pull. So she's really comfortable and confident in her ability to ease into the race and then start pressing it down. And it looks like she did it again today, but with a little bit more assertiveness up front. Wow, dude. Interesting how Chris was able to just slip right by so many people as an unassuming athlete, and now the the difference in this next season and how like much of a gap there's been made between the world champion from last year to this. Year. Yeah, and obviously Lauren Weeks Field coming back. Up quickly. Yeah, Lauren coming back hurts that, but at the same time we're starting to see the difference between the specialists and the jack of all trades. And that whole jack of all yep. trades and master of none doesn't really apply to Chris. She's semi mastered many of them. But this is, as you know, you can be the best at high rocks or you can be best at a couple other things, but it's really hard to, to be the best at high rocks if you don't go all in on high rocks. She's the Ryan Atkins. She's the Ryan Atkins of the female world. She really is. What do you think Ryan could debut at? Let's say that you trained Ryan or you at least wrote him his strength and his, his, uh, accessory work in his station work for let's say 12 weeks what could he do a, in this sport he's a low 60 guy he's like rylan like rylan super talented did you see that that guy who's the really impressive marathoner sebastian conrad just came in and oh. did one and now he's making statements that he's going to take the world record but these guys that all have these superiorly big engines are always going to have like stellar times but then what you're going to notice is in races like this, they'll come out and they'll do awesome stuff. But then when it just gets to the strategy and the back and forth type stuff, that's where mm -hmm. someone who's really been in that position for a long time, like Dylan, um, just like will maximize Miller getting off. Yeah. And it shows that the, the depth of the well when it comes to their actual station work. If you have yep. a monster engine, if you can just sit right at that limit and hold it the whole time, monster engines are monster engines. But when you have yep. real deep skills on those stations, you can handle the 
those daggers of surges during the races and overworking like we saw on the sleds today and then coming back and still having a good race. Although Sebastian Conrad, he ran 60 and didn't practice wall balls beforehand. 61 mid. Cracked on the wall balls, ran 61. He's a sub-60 guy his next time he does it, most likely. Sure. He's a special but, you know athlete. What? He's one of but those thing, top, though. top, top. That's just the difference between racing at a championship, though. How many of these dudes in the top 15 have 60? And then all of a sudden, them today, the difference yep. between first place and whatever place they were in were minutes and minutes and minutes. Look at this. Look at Meg. Ran about. it right back down. Both she and Michaela learned from Euros. Lauren took them to school in Maastricht, and both of them learned, and they have adapted phenomenally in just three weeks. Because they lost by, what, like a minute 40 or something three weeks ago? And now here they are heading to the sixth station, and they are all in a clump? I was talking about this earlier this week. There's an experience curve in this sport where there's X amount of races it takes for you to really figure out the formula of how to race this thing. Mm -hmm. And if you, like around that 10 race mark, like you kind of reach like, your ceiling, I think. And then all of a sudden you have to either make a humongous transformation in what you're doing to get to the next level, or you're going to stay there. You're going to be shelved. And I think most of that has to do with people's body weight. Did you see the veteran move that Michaela made? As she ran in, she wanted chalk, but it was inconvenient to get to. So she just grabbed the whole bucket and ran with it for like 30 meters, chalked up, tossed it on the ground, and hit this thing running and built up a lead. I've never seen anyone do that, but that is genius. She's cruising with this thing, too. Yeah. Lauren is suddenly gapped. Well, she's the a gap is girl. building. She's very, very lean. She doesn't have the what you can tell. I mean, she's a cross. She has a CrossFit background, but she doesn't have that that dominating uh, a physique of of a Meg. But she is absolutely running these women into the ground on this farmer scare. She's gonna catch Lauren here. Look at this. Lauren's gonna drop. Michaela is going to lap her. I did not. I did not see this coming. Meg just broke. Meg broke. And Michaela is out. Goodness. And she's out fast. You see that acceleration? I'm about to catch you on to it once this camera changes. Spice. That's a 15 oh, second Oh, yeah, she's gap. cooking. Yeah, she's moving. Is Weeks out yet? No. Nope. Here she comes. All right, 28 second gap. Lauren just lost 28 seconds on that transition and the farmer's carry. It's hard to get that back. Dylan Scott back on course. He's gonna do yeah, 28 race. seconds this late. And you could say Dang, that dude. your lunges can blow someone up, but you're not heading for a blow up on the lunges if you're running the way that Michaela's running right now. She exited that with real turnover. Anything can happen, of course, but she doesn't look the part of someone who's about to blow up. Man, look at her She's go, running. dude. She is trucking. Yeah. That is a different form and cadence than she was using on lap one. Of course, she was also on the ground on lap one. These lunges and wall balls are going to be spicy.
that. Dylan Scott. <laughs> uh, Dylan Scott picks up the gimbal and he's running. Giving someone a break. Dave Claxton raced already today. I know he was doing camera work. And uh, Graham's been running all day long. So Dylan just finishes taking second place in the race. And he's back out here tracking Michaela on the runs. What an animal. Michaela's hauling. I know. She's got a great... I do not know how she's racing in full... That has got to be so exhaustingly hot. Yeah, I, I'm i sure she has a reason and a purpose for it. It could be just for confidence, or it could be that she feels more put together in this kind of thing, but I can You ever put a pair of tights on and feel like a superhero? Tights. Yeah, if you put yeah, a pair of tights on sweating. sometimes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, then, I've got a couple and then I just feel like a, a walrus. God damn, dude. Yeah, she's hauling. She's in League of Rome right now. But, you know, it's one of these kind of things where all of a sudden, wall balls can just be a mysterious beast, and so can, so can, um, lunges. Did she go unbroken on her last set of wall balls? I believe she did. Oof. I was hoping Weeks might just have another card in her deck that she could drop. Like, if you're playing War... And she puts down a queen, but Weeks has just an ace to put down. You're a card but game that, man, and that, I appreciate that. Dude, I will F you up in a game of war. A lot of strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, game, that's, the, that's the game of thinkers right there. Dude, when it, go, it goes when it war goes to, and then chest. Dude, double war. Sometimes I even get to triple war. And that's where I usually, that's where I win. That's where I win the most. Well, listen, I, I, I can't afford to lose anymore. I'm, I'm going to keep my 20 off the table for war. Okay. Okay. You know, if, if I lost my whole billfold, I got this whole jar of change right here. And if that goes to shit, then I've got my lucky dinosaur. And I'll smash him open to get money out of finding you two. I think my son has that exact same dinosaur piggy bank. It's adorable. Dude, he's, got great, he's got great taste. All right, so we are heading to lunges. She's just so purposeful right now. You got a time gap on when week's coming in? I do. Will it be? It's Meg. It's like 22, 23 seconds. She's killing these lunges. She's got a better cadence than she does. Yeah. Meg's working faster, but Michaela's not working slow. I don't know. I'm catching up on this really big time. And then if she's just got thrusters then I'm gonna watch her cook the difference between you know that the longest run is actually the one between between wall balls um, and lunges so yeah we if you got we were averaging about 330 on our runs today and we were 409 on our last run and we ran it the yep. hardest so you're talking a minimum 30 to 40 seconds See, on that this gap and that drag extra. that she's doing yeah She's starting to do that big, long drag. Yep, she's tapping. There's no quitting Lauren either, though. Now she's starting to do the drag, too. Don't be lazy, Meg. Lauren's chugging. Alondra on it as well. Alondra's a big girl. She's a powerhouse. Yeah. So interesting, the body types are so different in the female field. Because you got these two really tall, leaner athletes, and then you've got these two shorter, kind of spark plug type girls that got thicker thighs. And, you know, I think probably, I would say about four to five inches of difference in height, maybe. Yeah. 
And, and, it, and you see how it plays out. Meg's uh, so good on some of these power base stations, and Lauren can fly through her burpee bra jumps and her lunges. Although Meg's not doing poorly on lunges, and her wall balls are so stellar. I think that Miram has the best wall balls in the world. She really? just went 258, unbroken, 258 at Euros. But Meg was 3-0. So Meg has the best wall balls here. So this this is not over. If that Meg can crazy. just get it within 15 seconds, if she can get it under 20, if she comes to wall balls under 20 seconds down, there's a real chance that she can be 20 seconds faster on those wall balls. Even if they both go unbroken. All right. What's the time gap here? Give me a time gap. Oh, man, she is oh, out of there. Sure. Like lightning. Okay. Come on, Megan. Dude, look at her go. Look at those thighs. All right. 24 seconds. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work out in her favor, dude. She killed it on that farmer carry, and now she is running like her hair is on fire. She really. And now, is she running like that because she feels this good, or because she is desperate to get a wall ball gap? If she has unbroken in her, 24 seconds might be enough. But she, her transition there looked visually, it, it was faster than Max. And Lauren is a full length and a half behind. Alondra's got one more length to go, I believe. No, two. She's got to go down and back. Still sitting strong and forth. Meg's got to Meg's got to just sell out on this run. But that's easier said than done when you have a hundred wall balls waiting for you. All right, Lauren's out. Lauren was about 50, 52 seconds behind, I think. It's tough here because Michaela and Meg have two night and day running forms. So Michaela looks so aggressive, but it's hard to tell if Meg is closing down on her. Got Tara Jackson, Bridget Brown. We're closing in on 58 minutes here. Is it just me, or is this is this event really empty? I don't think so. Well, I guess it's empty because they want the. Um, this like you know the lanes clear just for the pro race but where are all the mm -hmm. people I'm not sure I'm gonna check a split here what do we have so the world record is 102 flat for what so three and a half minutes until the world record so we're not going to see that fall today, which we didn't expect it to. World record was set over in Europe on a historically fast course. I thought the world record for chicks was like 60 minutes and 40 seconds. I thought it was 102. Mm -mm, Maybe I'm wrong. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. wrong on that? But let me check this then, Mr. McIntyre. Oh, dude, she's going for wall balls. Oh, yeah. 6045, you're right. The girls' wall balls are such a. I mean, I wish I had got to do the girls' wall balls. They're throwing that thing like six inches. <laughs> Lauren's not. Oh, dude. I, I'm heartbroken. I hope. She closed it down. Yeah? What's the 15 second gap? I think it's right around 20. Come on, just go. Pick it up and stop giving excuses. Just go, 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 go. Oh, yeah. The heat is on. Oh, my goodness. Look, this is everything we could faster. ask for. Yep, faster, faster. 
No, they're kind of tied oh. right now. Now she's matching her. I know. Uh oh, now, she, now, <laughs> now Michaela's pulling ahead in reps. Uh oh. You just can't tell who sold out too hard on the last two stations. Well, and we don't know what's going to happen when they hit 60, 70. Like, reps might be pretty now. But you get caught up in that back and forth early, and that can be the difference between breaking and not breaking. They both have unbroken potential in them. But they have had a tough day out there. First to drop loses. Alondra in in third. And Lauren wow. right behind her. Alondra made a pass. Uh, Lauren's dude, struggling with depth right now. She's going to go 100 balls. All balls unbroken. Tara Jackson closing in hard. What are the girls at right now? I don't know. Let's see if we can get uh, event noise turned up a little bit. Oh my God, Tara Jackson is actually throwing down fire. Tara is flying on the run. You guys can't see it right now, but Tara is cruising. Kayla's still repping a little. Oh, they're going right back and forth. I know, but how many she got? 15 ahead of her? She's not going to break. Oh, she went unbroken straight through. And she didn't really fade in cadence either. That is a huge bounce back after European Championships. And falling oh, she on the one of the race. Chip third. Unless she took second because uh, there was a, I think there's a penalty in there. Or uh, Meg ran an extra lap, I think is what it is. Meg crosses in second here. Impressive, dude. Yeah. Yeah, Michaela did take second there. Uh, uh, Meg did an extra lap in Maastricht at the European Championships. So what would she what would she have placed? Uh, let's see the time difference there. Lauren was 101.12, Michaela was 102.45, and Meg was 103.12. So Meg was 27 seconds behind with an extra lap. So they would have swapped positions. Wow. But either way. Either way, to come back here and take down Lauren after Lauren just gave it to them at Euros, such a good performance. Oh, and Alondra looking here. Has Alondra broken yet? I don't know. Lauren just went unbroken and passed in. Yep, she got her third. But dude, that's exactly what you need. This is the kind of uh, this is what happened to me at North American Championships, and you have the ability to make the transformation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you'd rather have it now than in May. Yeah. And and even then, we're only <laughs> judging that based on the fact that she won three weeks ago. Had she come out and not run that race at all, and this was her her debut or her second race back after childbirth, this, this is an right incredible now? performance. Who is this girl? We thought it was Linda. Who is she? Yeah, I believe th believe this is Linda Meyer here. No, Linda had green socks on. Oh, this is not Linda. Oh, Tara's over on the other side chugging. Oof. Unreal performance from all three of them. 
shoulder to shoulder in an absolute battle with them smiling, shaking hands. Phenomenal sportsmanship here at High Rock. Great attitudes. You ladies are unbelievable. I wonder if we can get a camera over to the far side for wall balls here. Yeah. Oh my god. Tara has <laughs> been some, charging. I need some food. Starting to crash. It's a tough performance for you today. It was, dude. I did not expect to be talking for this long. This is a little out of my realm. You're doing magnificent. I love it. No one's screaming. Oh, everyone breaking at the same time. Vivian Tafudo, that's who that was. Vivian crosses in fifth place. Which, what did she come in ranked? Eighth? I don't know. Vivian came in ranked tenth and took fifth. I love it. That's solid. That's a Rich Ryan type performance. God, dude. This is a rough place sitting right there. Is Bridget Brown racing this? Yeah, Bridget Brown. Is that what that is? She's, she's doing well. Yeah. Viola over there, I believe. They still have like 20 some to go. Is this the worst, the worst place you've been as an athlete in a race? 70 or 80 in? Is that like the deepest you've gone? No. Spartan Race World Championships, always on that la second to last climb before you come back into the village, is always where I'm just feeling so sorry for myself. I think that's fair. I hated that. Race. This is this is top two or three. The last twenty wall balls are top two or three least pleasant athletic experiences in my life. Oh, Tara J. Tara Jackson. Oh, right oh ahead Viola. Of Viola. Viola closed well too. And is that Camilla down there? She doesn't have a hat on. Usually Camilla. Or does she have a hat? I think that's Camilla down there as well. And there's Chris. First sight of Chris in a while. Camilla keeps that wall ball up so high. You see that over there? That's barely dropping under her forehead. Yeah. That's tough to do. Save some energy. Sure does if you can handle it. Bridget Brown in, which I would think seventh. There's Linda right there, dude. Yeah, so we misidentified uh, Linda as Vivian before. Vivian, I apologize there. Chris keeps that ball up high, too. I'm competing against Chris in Dubai in the government games in a couple of weeks. Is that out of the bag now? No stopping, no stopping. Yeah. That's going to be a cool competition. Crap that. Don't put that bucket. Dude, no one in the top 15 should be able to use the bucket. No, and she looks fine anyway. Maybe they just put it there as a threat. Camilla coming through. There you go. Either 8th or ninth.
So we have Michaela Norman at 102.04, Meg Jacoby 102.41, Lauren Weeks 103.44, Alondra Greenlee 104.13, Vivian Deputo 106.03, Tara Jackson 107.46 in sixth place, seventh Viola Oberlander 107.49, and eighth Bridget Brown 108.24. Michaela put a minute on Lauren in the last two stations and runs. Wow. She's a weapon. That doesn't happen very often. She looked like she figured it out today is what it looked like. She's already run the time trial fast. Today she figured out how to run a championship race. There's going to be such good storylines for world championships. With these three women and Alondra poking her head in there. And the men's division what is just chaos now. What place is Chris in? Maybe, maybe shooting for 10 or 11? Linda Meyer crossed in 102.22 in 10. So we'll have Chris in 11. Wow. So see our two women who have not made it to wall balls yet. That was heavy. Yeah. Pull up the men's leaderboard here. Not leaderboard, the actual results from today's event. See what it officially shakes out at, if there were any penalties. See the timestamps. Wow, that looks fancy. Does. Two men broke one hour. Megita with 59.11 and Dylan with 59.45. And then Michael Sandbach, your boy. Super, Michelle Sandy, super as you call her. Super unexpected field. <laughs> yeah. Surprising to see Ronkovich back there. And then from there on, it's, it's kind of all shakeups. What does this mean? What does this mean for the men's sport going into Worlds? So you had Rankovic win with authority at European Championships. You have David Magida pull the upset today and Dylan Scott go number two. You have the favorite, Ryan Kent, all the way back in seventh. There's the rumor of your return. All of a sudden, we have chaos on the male side of the sport. Today provided no clarity. Yeah, it was just one of those kind of races where it's just... It was just the course, and people beat one another. They didn't beat the course. So I think Megita had the strategy of his life. I think Dylan had the strategy of his life. I think probably the most impressive but impressive run but just didn't put the strategy together was with Sandback. Ronkovic just being that guy who's just always kind of a consistent dude who's always right there by the podium. Kent just didn't have the race that he wanted to obviously and there's guys you know i think there's always room for improvement but if i had to guess the people that we normally see on the podium will likely be there at world championships um still i think this right here is going to get like we're, we're 14 weeks out 13 weeks out from world championships now everybody takes the data from this event and then they go go to work now there's certain people that are going to put in extreme amounts of work and you'll see this shuffle the deck a little bit mm. And then there's going to be some people that I think probably may crumble um, in this position. But I bet you, if you had to bet one, two, and three, I bet you Ronkovic will be back on the podium. I think Sandy has a great chance. And Kent could redeem himself. But um, that being said, I also think Dylan Scott and Makita, this, their kites are flying high. Confidence is the most important currency in these, in these kind of events. Oh, I like that. Absolutely. And, and Kent got a taste today of what you got here last year. And we know how that turned out. The absolute best thing sometimes that can happen is to just get smacked around a little bit and then have a good amount of time available to change things around before World Championships. But Magida and Dylan showed that on a championship style event, they can't be counted out anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't expect it. I did mention it, but I did, I, I, I did mention it. I said Dylan, and I also mentioned the Megita thing. I did not expect 
what really happened there. I thought Dylan may be in the back and Megita may get on the podium somehow, but to win and then take second, pretty pretty crazy. And for it the is. women's, I personally, I saw that coming. Um, I did not expect uh, Weeks to do as poorly as she did, but I thought the Magnusly and that um, that new girl from Sweden were going to do phenomenal. Weeks was the only thing that I was a little bit um, confused about. But that's what happens, dude. That's that learning curve that I was telling you about. It's like that you've got about 10 races to figure it out, and then you hit your ceiling, and then you're either going to change everything to get to the next piece, or you're going to stick around there. These two girls, Megan and uh, Michaela, are new, so they're having these big jumps. Yeah, I can buy that. I was very impressed by Michaela. She looked very, very, she looked like a different athlete from three weeks ago. And I'm not sounding the alarm bells on Lauren. We're still talking seven months postpartum here. She's ahead of schedule. I think if this was, if there was never a pregnancy and a birth in there, this might be a worrisome result, but she led the race for six stations. And then sometimes you get, you get caught, you get gapped and suddenly your, your tires are just flat. And I think of all the times in her career, I, she gets the most grace from me right now. <sighs> Just like on the men's side, I don't think this gave us a favorite for Worlds, but I think it's a little more clear than the men's. Over and over and over, we see the same four women as clearly to the top four in the world. Yeah. Yep. 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 I do like that though, dude. This was, this was a day at the casino for the guys. You know, it was just all over the place. So um, mind blown. That was a fun to watch. Uh, I am going to go have lunch and I'm going to tap out. Anything else you need for me? I just want to know one thing. Do you yeah. see anything today? Anything that stands in your way that's going to give you troubles for coming back to repeat as the High Rocks World Champion again in 2023? Short answer is no. Um, long answer is like, you just got to study the people you compete against. So if I watch this film, I'll probably watch this film like two or three times before I, uh, in the next week and just study everybody. And then you just know how to race against people. And I know that's like, yes, no, maybe so. But um, in reality, dude, like it's all about power output. That's my, that's my biggest thing. And I think a lot of people need to look at it. It's about your average power output in a race like this. And the people that did well here, Dylan Scott had this insanely sustained power output front front to back. There were some athletes like Kent that spiked and then crashed. And it's whoever has the most sustainable power output. Michael spiked, then crashed. But Dylan Scott and uh, you know Megita had kind of an ascension. Like he went like this. So watching people and really studying them is probably the most important thing at this point. But I'll go to the data and I'll look at it. Um, you know, if I the one thing I was kind of going to be worried about is if Kent like finished three minutes ahead of everybody, that would be like okay, he's in his zone. But he didn't do that, and the rest of the races were kind of like crunched together. It was a tight ass race, so mm -hmm. no one's a standout right now. Um, that being said. Uh, you know what? There's a lot. Like we didn't have this race in North American Championships last year. We only had a couple Americans, so all the Europeans filled in those gaps really, really tight. So I maybe even would have gotten past last year for second place. There's a possibility. So it's you know players on the field is all I'm going to say. Well, I love it. We have 13 weeks until we see you towing that line, assuming, of course, that you're able to hit a qualifying time. We assume that's not going to be an issue for you, but 13 weeks until we get to watch it all go down again on a championship stage. Well, I will uh, make sure to be uh, to serve up some humble pie in a couple races over in Europe soon. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to the OCR Report for producing this stream. High Rocks for having a fantastic venue, fantastic group of athletes brought over here. And we'll see you in 13 weeks at the World Championship.